Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Now, London Mayor Sadiq Khan. He appears to be an Islamic fundamentalist with a burning hatred of England and the English. His office recently put out side-to-side -side photographs uh, showing a wholesome-looking English family strolling along the Thames Riverbank with the caption, Not Representative of Londoners. And alongside this was one of Khan himself, uh, surrounded by the sort of people he would like to see in place of hated old whitey, uh, captioned positive and optimistic. Now, in actual fact, Khan isn't completely wrong about white families being non-representative of London because the English now account for only some 45% of London's population and are rapidly declining, uh, even as the positive and optimistic uh, non-white demographic is rapidly growing. But Khan wasn't talking about demographics and percentages. He simply doesn't think England's capital city uh, should be represented by the English at all, period. As far as he's concerned, uh, the sooner we are airbrushed out of London, England and the entire world, uh, the better. And in order to fully understand the wicked anti-white hatred here, uh, try to imagine two photographs put out by Hitler's 1930s Nazi regime, uh, one showing a Jewish family in Berlin, happily sauntering spreeside, and the other, a photograph of Hitler himself, surrounded by SS soldiers, and above both photographs, the exact same captions utilised by Sadiq Khan, uh, albeit with Berliners rather than Londoners. And if you think my mentioning Hitler in the same breath as Khan is, is a, an example of exaggeration and paranoia, I can only point out that Khan has gone well out of his way uh, to help people with a distinct admiration for Hitler. And the first is Louis Farrakhan, uh, the black supremacist leader of the Nation of Islam, who has repeatedly denounced white people as a race of devils who deserve to die. And Farrakhan doesn't like Jews much either. He describes them as satanic and has repeatedly stated that Hitler uh, was a great man. Now, Farrakhan was barred from entering Britain in the early 2000s after the government prescribed the Nation of Islam as a hate group. Now, this annoyed Sadiq Khan intensely, and as a purported human rights lawyer back in the day, he sought to overturn uh, this government ban. And I think it's fair to say that Khan spent as much time and energy trying to get Farrakhan into Britain as he later did as Mayor of London in trying to keep President Trump out. And after being embraced by the Labour Party, uh, Khan tried to deny his role in the Farrakhan affair, but according to uh, Full Fact and uh, numerous newspaper articles at the time, uh, it's very much true. Khan's admiration for Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is hardly a one-off. You know, prior to his election as a Labour MP, uh, he was sworn into British high office holding the Quran, of course, uh, but prior to that, Khan had spent close to two decades intimately involved with white-hating black supremacists uh, and Islamic extremists. And in 2004, uh, Khan was chairman of the Muslim Council of Britain's Legal Affairs Committee. And those in the know uh, were already talking about the Muslim Council of Britain as simply being a front for the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, which seeks a global Islamic caliphate. But it took another five years before the Labour government at the time finally got round to recognising it as such and dropping it like a hot potato. Uh, but Sadiq Khan was on the board of the Civil Liberties Pressure Group Liberty for three years, uh, where he argued in the defence of Baba Ahmad, a British man jailed after pleading guilty to conspiracy and providing material uh, to support terrorism. Khan also represented Sheikh Arma, a British man alleged to have been a recruiter for Al-Qaeda, who was picked up by the American army in Afghanistan in 2001. And according to US intelligence, uh, Sheikh Arma was holed up in the Tora Bora caves alongside a certain Osama bin Laden. Khan was 
also seeking to overturn the British government's border entry ban on Yusuf al-Karadawi, who was the then spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. And Karadawi had called for the Islamic takeover of England and indeed uh, much of the Western world. And he describes Islamic suicide bombing as a legitimate act. Sitting directly alongside Khan on the Board of Liberty was an Islamic gentleman by name of Azad Ali, uh, who has excused the murder of British soldiers and was actively involved with the extremist organisations Islamic Forum of Europe and Jamaat-e-Islam. Azad Ali went on to become Head of Community Development and Engagement at the organisation MEND, uh, M-E-N-D, which actively seeks to undermine the British government's counter-terrorism strategy. And astonishingly, uh, or perhaps not so astonishingly, for those uh, fully aware of what's been happening in England over recent years, uh, Azad Ali, as an active supporter of Islamic terrorism, was also an advisor to the police and home office uh, on police procedure and a member of the Independent Police Complaints Commission. And he also sat on the Home Office's uh, Trust and Confidence and uh, uh, Trust and Confidence Community Panel. And last but not least, uh, he's a, a board member of the genuinely fascistic outfit Unite Against Fascism, uh, which is also supported by the British ex-Prime Minister David Cameron, a soft-handed man, as witless as he is clueless when it comes to Islam. So Sadiq Khan then appeared to be surrounded by swarms of unsavoury people at work and rather unsurprisingly the same rings true of his home life as well. His brother-in-law, Makbul Javaid, was a supporter of the terrorist organisation al muhajirun which became notorious for its September 2002 conference called the Magnificent 19 which was praising the September 11th, 2001 attacks, uh, which at the time, at the time, uh, was generally accepted as an Islamic atrocity rather than any other sort of atrocity. And Mr. Javaid regularly appeared alongside some of England's most notorious hate preachers. And in 1998, uh, his name appeared on a fatwa calling for a quote, full-scale war of jihad, end quote, against Britain and the US. And here is the delightful fellow uh, speaking in Trafalgar Square about the necessity of an Islamic takeover of England with the black flag of Islamic jihad fluttering behind him. Islam came to save the world from darkness. Sadiq Khan's jihadist brother-in-law uh, went on to become head of litigation services at the Commission for Racial Equality, by the way. And the further one looks down the, the multicultural rabbit hole of broken Britain, the more surreal the whole thing becomes. Mr Javaid is currently a partner at legal firm Simons, Muirhead and Burton and lists amongst his Facebook friends Cage Director Moaz M. Beg who was once a member of Al-Qaeda, and fellow director Asim Qureshi, who described Islamic State butcher Muhammad M. Wazi, uh, a.k.a. Jihadi John, as a beautiful young man. Here is the beautiful young man engaged in decapitating British aid workers and American journalists in Syria. M. Wazi was British, God help us, and graduated... Uh, from the University of Westminster in 2009. And British universities, by the way, are absolute hotbeds of Islamic extremism, and they're funded with billions of pounds by those, those uh, lovely people running Saudi Arabia, but I'm going off track. All in all, then, uh, prior to becoming Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan spent his entire adult life mixing with and legally defending any number of people whose main agenda consisted of a hatred of England, the English and indeed the entire world. And many of these extremist friends of Khan were actually prepared to kill us. And in some instances, they did just that to the loud cheering of the others. So this video was made simply to list the various 
horrifying realities surrounding Sadiq Khan's pre-London mayoral life. And there are countless other examples similar to the ones included here. But I think, I think everyone understands by now just what sort of a man Sadiq Khan uh, so surely is. And there will be a part two coming soon, which will detail the antics of Khan since uh, he somewhat surreally became mayor of England's capital city in 2016. Relevant links to all the events and people uh, mentioned in this article are provided in the box below, along with links to my Rumble video account, Twitter account and Patreon account. That's it. Thank you very much.